the Salmon River, District 3 has several teams that don't always get their due. Stepping outside the shadows of the SIC, this is the Treasure Valley PrepCast with Logan Green. That's right. This is the Treasure Valley PrepCast on IdahoSports.com, brought to you by D.L. Evans Bank. This is community banking. This is your weekly one-stop shop for everything going on in 3A, 2A, and 1A athletics in the Treasure Valley District 3. Brandon Bainey with Logan Green. Logan, what's going on? Oh, not much. Just, uh, you know, uh, we we mentioned this. I filled in for the eight-man PrepCast last week, um, but it's bracketology time. It's time to to get down and um, look at potential brackets that are setting up. And, and you know, volleyball has already started. Uh, Soccer has already started. So those brackets are getting filled out uh, for districts. So uh, it's a fun time of the fall season right now. Yeah, soccer is just about finished, actually. Uh, we've got championship matchups set uh, in both uh, 3A boys and 3A girls in, in District 3. Yeah, I mean, right now, if you look, you know, you can get all the brackets for every level on idahosports.com. Uh, but right now, kind of as we expected in boys soccer, uh, that matchup, that championship game is tomorrow, actually, at 5 o'clock is Weezer and McCall. McCall with a McCall Donnelly with a, a sneaky 1-0 to victory over Ambrose. So, you know, the first-year uh, team in Ambrose there almost sneaks into that uh, conference championship game. Uh, they did fall 1-0, to and then, of course, Weezer's just been on a roll. Um, and then you look on the other side, the girls championship is between Fruitland and McCall Donnelly. And uh, if anybody stops Fruitland, kudos to them. I just think that uh, they're on a tear right now and it's theirs to lose. I mean, they beat Payette eight to one in that uh, semifinal game. McCall Donnelly with a one to zero win in overtime over Weezer. So you got to like Fruitland's girls team to come away victorious there. And uh, I, I like them to make a deep run in the state uh, tournament as well. Yeah, it's going to be fun, Logan. Next week, we can actually start talking about state soccer and where these teams are, are lined up on the bracket, right. how they'll match up, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So th- those championships are Thursday, if you're listening to this. Uh, yeah, sorry. Wednesday or Thursday. No, you're, you're fine. <laughs> you're Thursday. Fine. So, and, and maybe by the time people listen to this, they, the matches will have already been final. But um, yeah, it's exciting. Uh, postseason soccer is off and running. Volleyball, you mentioned the 1A D1 district. Yeah three uh tournaments started with some play-in games um but but when you look at the, the the field overall i think liberty charter the number one seed the the clear favorite there yeah i think liberty charter has been on you know a tear and as well it's it looks like it'd be it, it's theirs to lose they're the number one seed the number two seed is idaho city um we mentioned it last week where they actually upset um, well, I guess, I mean, I don't know if you call it an upset, but they, they took down Greenleaf and it was between those two to be that second spot and the Idaho city comes away with it. So I think those two are going to have uh, quite the battle. I, I think they both win their first round game, uh, that they'll have on Thursday. And then if they win Thursday, they'll play on Monday against each other, uh, at Columbia high school. And I think that will be a great matchup. And of course the winner goes on to play most likely, <laughs> Uh, Liberty Charter in that um, conference championship matchup. Right. So for the first round, so there's 11 teams in this league. It's gigantic. So so uh, they had three play-in matches. Then you've yeah. got eight teams. Those those first four matches are at the the higher seed, and then the rest of it all moves to Columbia High School, a neutral site in Nampa. It's funny, Logan. I feel like uh, I've, I've been emailing back and forth with the Idaho City volleyball coach, Rachel Rex. She's kind of my go-to source now for uh, 1A, D1, D3 uh, volleyball because uh, okay. with, with yeah. 11 schools, you know, it's a lot to keep track of, right? There's a yeah. lot of matches, oh, yeah. a lot of results. And so I'm always emailing her, hey, did, do you know who won this match? It, it could be matchups that don't even involve her school. And uh, she's kind of been my go-to source. So I feel like I, I know coach Rex really well. We've never met in person, but we've, we've probably sent like, I don't know, 10 emails back and forth. So it's <laughs> well, so maybe she should get one of the three stars this week. For, yeah. Uh, coach Rex at Idaho city. Yeah, for sure. She really helped me out with the seedings for the, for the district tournament because not everybody played the same number of conference games this year, unfortunately, because of COVID right. So that Jeff state had to cancel some matches. And so it left uneven records. And then what do you do? And so it was a mess, but you can follow all of the district volleyball and soccer brackets uh, on our site, idahosports.com. They're all right there on 
the homepage. And then we'll have more to talk about next week, certainly once these districts really ramp up. But Right, right. Yeah, because we'll be uh, deep in probably semifinals or championship matchups by the time we record next week. And and soccer will have, be seated mo- for the most part. They, they're going to finish up uh, here this week. and But the state tournament for soccer starts on next Thursday, the 21st. So yeah. uh, just a week away from that. Yep, so we'll have plenty to talk about there. Uh, If we flip the page now to football, Logan, and we talked about uh, really the interesting matchups seem to be at the – well, where do you want to start? I I feel like we have to start in 3A. I know we were talking before we hopped on that we were going to talk 2A, but we have to talk 3A because you've got – it finally has arrived, right? The big showdown we've all been waiting for. Right. Weezer at Homedale, both teams 7-0 and overall, both teams – three and oh in the conference this is the game yeah and, and if you go back to last week uh, just interesting we kind of thought that there were maybe three teams on top and three teams on the bottom well there was going to be a, a differentiator between fruitland and mccall donnelly and last week weezer beat mccall donnelly 52 to zero fruitland beat parma 35 to zero and then homedale beat pa pay at 48 to zero so the top three all shutting everybody out um, and then that, like you said, it sets up the game of the year. Um, I, I don't think I'm too crazy at saying that this is a potential state championship preview between these two teams. And I have, I have no idea how this is going to shake out. I think on, if I lean anywhere, I like Weezer uh, because of what they did to Emmett, that they beat Emmett, uh, one of the top five teams in 4A, and my goodness, if you don't know how that Emmett Middleton game ended last week, I know this is not. Uh, I want to talk about, about that for just half a second here. If Middleton was up by thirteen with a minute left, and Emmett scored a touchdown to cut it to six, uh, Emmett kicked it deep, only had one timeout left. Right, all you got to do is take a knee and end the game. If you're Middleton, uh, they go out and play for the points to win tiebreaker scenarios. End up fumbling the ball. Emmett gets it back, scores with no time left, makes the extra point game over. Emmett wins. That was one of the, the the craziest endings I have ever seen in any level of football. Just crazy ending. Anyways, um, Emmett, you know, Weezer with their victory over Emmett, I think they have the best victory. So that's all I'm basing it off of. I think that they have that in their pocket. Um, but Homedale has the tradition. They have the history of being on top. And that that's got to count for something else, right? that you have been there, you've walked this walk, you've run through this conference you know, year after year, and you've played in state championship games. Now, you might not have won those as of recent, but you've been there. And so that's got to be an advantage to Homedale. I think it's truly a, a coin flip, um, it, and we'll see what happens. It should be a great game Friday. This is going to be a fun game because both teams have really strong line play. As a former offensive right. lineman, I, this is the kind of stuff I get hyped for, right? When you look at Weezer, they have Riley Willette and Jesse Lockett and and Willie Shirts on that defensive line. You know, right? All these great linemen, and it's really set up well for a senior quarterback and Brett Spencer who. Uh, has been nothing short of phenomenal this year. And and Willie Shirt, you know, we talk about Hayden Kinchelow all the time from Homedale. Kinchelow, 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 we know. Willie Shirts is a really good running back for Weezer as well. So Right. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of these guys for Weezer have been playing since they were sophomores. They've been playing significant minutes deep into their third year on varsity. And that's that's got to count for something, right, on, on their end. Um, it, and, but like you said, we have been talking about Kinchlow and he gets that respect as he should. And I think maybe that uh, the deciding factor comes down to his ability on the ground versus that defensive line for Weezer and who wins that matchup. If they're able to stop him, um, not letting him pick up buckets of yards like he usually does and makes Homedale throw the ball. Maybe you see, you know, things shift that way, but if Kinchlow is able to keep it and pound it on the ground and then open it up for some play action passes down the field, which my goodness, they did that to perfection last year. Uh, did Homedale just pound, 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 and then when they least expect it, throw it for sixty yards uh, for a touchdown. So that's something to look out for in this game. Uh, see how that battle uh, in the trenches turns out. 
yeah, I, I, I give Weezer the slight edge in terms of line play, and certainly you would give Homedale the edge uh, with the running back, right? Even right. though Willie Schertz is good, I mean, Kinchelow, Kinchelow's the guy. Um, so, yeah, yeah it, it is going to be fascinating to see. I'm not sure how much either one of these teams, like you said, it's kind of selective passing, right? It's it's we'll, we'll start with the run, yeah. then we'll try to open it up. Yeah, they're going to want to go to the ground. And I just think back to the playoff game Homedale had last year against Timberlake um, where they would just – when they threw it, it was so perfect. I mean, they didn't expect it. Uh, Timberlake actually took an early lead in that game, um, and Homedale would just run the ball. And then when you least expect it, you throw it, and uh, Dines would find whoever it was wide open wherever they were or, and, and, you know, you would expect a lot of people thought Homedale might take that step back. We've talked about it earlier in the season when, um, Uranga left a couple years ago, but, but Dines has come in and played just, just as well, um, and done a phenomenal job at quarterback there for Homedale when he's asked to do it. And it, like I said, I wish I could be there for that game because it's going to be, uh, it's going to be great, and I don't think it's an indicator. Most likely, whoever wins this game gets the number one seed uh, in the 3A state tournament. I don't think there's any debate on that. Um, and whoever loses, is they got to play on opening weekend. Um, but th- the way the 3A seeds work is, you know, the, those conference champs get a bye, and then everything gets reshuffled after that, after the first round. So if you're, let's say, let's say Homedale does lose in this game, that doesn't mean that they they won't have home field advantage up to that state championship game, right? They, you know, they're gonna whoever loses is gonna have a home game in that first round, and then there's a great chance that they are the two or three seed um, coming out. I think Gooding will probably has a good chance to jump the loser, and so Gooding might end up with that second seed at the end of the day, um, and that and neither one of those teams wants to have to travel to Gooding. So you, uh, you look at it from that aspect that this might be the game that decides who has to go to Gooding and who has home field advantage through the playoffs. Yep. I think that's exactly how it's going to shake out. You, you mentioned uh, Jackson Dines, the quarterback for uh, Homedale. It's, it's, it's almost the opposite where we talked about with the running backs. Kinchelo is the guy and he gets all the attention and Willie Schertz is kind of, neglected and he's I, I think he's a, a great talent it's kind of the, the opposite with quarterbacks right Brett Spencer right. kind of gets headlines because oh he's got this commit you know he's got this offer from the Idaho Vandals and he's been to all these passing camps I, I think that right. I, I think is just as good so it's it's interesting how the teams kind of mirror each other in in, in ways but I think you're right. right I think I think Gooding probably leapfrogs provided Gooding wins out Gooding leapfrogs whoever loses this game, but I don't see whoever loses falling further than third in the match. No, exactly. And that's, that's where the mat, those just where we don't know, we don't know how those max prep ring. I don't even know how they work. And, and we're going to get into that with the two a, um, some questions we have there, but it, we don't know. We don't know how that is going to shake out. And I guess, I guess we'll see. Um, we will see uh, when those come out. I mean, we're a week and a half away from knowing how everybody's going to be, you know, seated. Um, it, it's right around the corner, but there's, there's, I think you got a good chance of being second or third, depending on how the computers shake out. We'll see. Yeah, there, there, There's no transparency with the max preps ratings. So when you try to look and figure out how the ratings are calculated, here's what you get. Max preps does not poll coaches, sports writers, or fans, nor does our staff make any judgments on the merits of any individual team. Prior season history, school size, and comments on message boards are not considered in the Max Preps computer rankings. The system utilizes the huge number of games stored in the Max Preps database. Generally, the more a team wins, the higher the ranking. However, the system takes into account quality wins against other highly ranked opponents and strength of schedule. For example, a team's ranking is hurt more by losing to a team that is ranked below them than a team ranked ahead. So that's that's pretty much what they say there's not too much more to it beyond that yeah this is like it's like the bcs right you just put it in the computer and it's going to spit out something and whether you like it or not that's the way it is and i i you know there's it's going to happen eventually where this spits out something that is just where this is some computer house and some warehouse that has no human interaction 
and it's going to rate somebody where they should not be, and we can all see it. But we're going to go off the rankings, and that's the way it's going to be. And and that's going to cause some anger and frustration, and rightfully so. Um, I, I think the ratings are a little bit better than preceded options that you you know you yeah. see sometimes in in the the basketball state tournaments and at the one A uh, I believe D one or one A D two still has the preceded brackets and um, we talked about that on the eight man prep cast where uh, you're most likely going to have two conference champions play in the first round which probably two undefeated teams playing hey, anyway anyways we don't need to get into that but. Um, <laughs> If we jump down to two A, so we we were talking about two A. Um, the big game this week is Nampa Christian and Melba. Uh, of course, if if Melba or if Nampa Christian wins and wins their last game, of course they're the conference champions, and I am proved as a genius, right, for picking uh, Nampa Christian. And uh, we'll see what happens. I think Nampa Christian had a huge, huge, huge win last week against Declo. Uh, Declo. They have one of the biggest wins in 2A this year as they beat Kimberly from 3A, who had been a top five team most of the year until they lost to Declo. Um, and I believe I believe that's their only loss on the year to have to look at it. Uh, they have a big showdown against Gooding the final week of the year that usually decides who wins that conference. Um, but Nampa Christian, with that big win against Declo, you think, hey, let's say Nampa Christian doesn't win the conference, they, they fall to Melba, don't win the conference. That that should improve their max prep ranking, right? Beating Declo? No. Well, <laughs> let's roll the videotape. You look at the 2A rankings on max preps, and Nampa Christian is eighth, while Declo is fourth. Declo's five and two, and Nampa Christian's six and one. What did Nampa Christian do wrong to be ranked eighth while Declos were? No, it's no diss to Declos. They're a fantastic team. They probably should have went to the state championship last year, in my opinion. Um, they lost to Westside in a blizzard, and I thought they played better than Westside in that game. Um, but, anyways, are you looking? They must be looking at the win. Like you said, it's hard to determine. So, Declos does have some 3A wins while Nampa Christian only has a one 3A lot. They do have a win over Parma, who's 3A. Um, but what what do they have to do to be ranked higher? That's my question. Is is not beating the teams you should beat not the answer? Uh, you, they must the, – the, the computers must be looking at the win over Kimberly and Buell for Declo much heavier than they're looking at the win over Declo for – I know I'm spinning a web here, but it just it just doesn't make sense when you look at it on paper. Well, it's like we've talked about time and again, Logan. The strength of schedule is definitely factored into this. And so, yeah, yeah Declo has played just as many 3A teams as they've played 2A teams, right? They've yeah. played they played Aberdeen, which is going to be a 2A playoff team. They played West Jefferson, who is fighting for a playoff spot. In yeah. The ranks. They've played Gooding and Kimberly. And when you look at Nampa Christian's schedule, I'm sorry, there's there's a lot of soft teams. They play, yeah. You know, they've they played Marcin. They've played Valley. They've played, I mean, there's, you look up and down the schedule. And, and when you look at quality wins, you know, they don't, they don't have it, right? The, the Declo and, win is, is it. That's it. Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, it's you know they lost to Fruitland, and and otherwise they've beaten Wendell, Parma, Marcine Valley, New Plymouth. That's not that's just not going to yeah. help the resume, right? Yeah, when you break it down like that, yeah, you look at the wins and they're not very impressive. And this goes back to last year when you saw some of that frustration where New Plymouth was left out of the playoffs, and a, a two and six Malad team gets in, um, and you look over there and you say, okay, they they played a little bit. Uh, better competition. Um, but then you look as well and you see, you see Aberdeen and bear Lake, um, both at three and three ranked above Nampa Christian. Uh, right now, Melba is sitting at fifth and, you know, a, a win against Nampa Christian. Does it, does it improve anything for them? It based on what I'm seeing here, it, it might not. Um, and does Mel, how does Melba shake out? You know, let's say Melba, wins that game, they get a buy, but they're not guaranteed a home game, right? In the in the second round. I mean, I, I think they would they would get a home game. 
um, because I mean, they're, they're fifth right now. And in terms of the conference champions, they are fourth among uh, the five divisions, but I, I think Melba with the win is probably assured of a home right, playoff cause, game. Cause you'll get first and West side there, but yeah, it's, <laughs> Are you, sorry, were you were you talking about this for the semifinals, or were you talking about? Yeah, the se- the semifinals. So okay, the semifinals. So, yeah, probably. So not. the first round. So the first round, they don't. I mean, they don't get a buy. They they get a buy, right? So they move right. on. But there's going to be somebody's going. to You look at the rankings. Let's say they stay the way they are with Westside, Firth, North Fremont, Declo, and Melba. Does 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 Melba have to go on the road in the in that semifinal? Their first. I guess that's what I meant to say. Their first yeah. round. Okay, yeah, the quarterfinals. I think Melba gets a home game for that if they win. So, okay, so if you win, you get a home game. It's not reseeded. Yeah, because uh, I mean, because two of the teams that are ahead of them right now are Firth and North Fremont, right? Somebody is going to lose. Right, they have to play that, each other. Yeah, somebody's. Game. Yeah, somebody's going to fall, and and if Firth loses, which you know people, I'd probably take North Fremont. Um, that's two losses for Firth, so you think that would drop them here towards the end? Who, who knows? Who knows? It's, we'll see it's, what happens. It's, it's just we'll we'll know more next week, right? Um, we'll we'll see how everything shakes out next week. Yep, I will say I think the reason why Bear Lake is ranked so high, they're ranked sixth in the in the Max Preps ratings, is because they've played. Uh, some Wyoming schools, particularly Jackson Hole High School, which is six and one currently, with their only loss coming to Pocatello, which is two right above where yeah. Bear Lake is at. So, I like that. Yeah, so Bear Lake, yeah, good job for them by by playing tough opponents and, and getting to where they're at. I guess that goes. I mean, we talked about this earlier in the year. That is a loss to a good team better than a win against a bad team, and it looks like it is. Yep. Um, based on what we're seeing, especially you look at the difference between Nampa Christian sitting at eighth with six wins and uh, Bear Lake with only three wins, sitting two spots above them. So it looks like better win, uh, a better loss is a good loss is better than a bad win, yep. or you know, beating a bad team. Yeah. So interesting. I think this. I think people will start playing to this more, right? D- do you want to schedule an easy win, or do you want to go, heck, go schedule a four A team? You know, a four A team is not going to play you, but um, do you schedule the best three A team you can? You know, do you? I think you're going to see people wanting to play the. You know, if you're a Parma or a Payette, you're probably not looking at this. But if you're a team that expects to be there in the playoffs, you're probably looking to play up a level um, as best as possible. We we've already seen schools implement that where Grangeville played McCall Donnelly this year. Uh, I think they played Weezer also didn't, and maybe not. Um, I, no, I think so. Yes, they did. Yeah. And then uh, the big one in four a is Sandpoint traveled to Homedale and yeah. lost to Homedale, but because Homedale is such a juggernaut, Sandpoint with the max preps rating right now, Logan, they, they would have home field advantage until the championship, which is, yeah, they, I mean, that's they, huge for a team up North, isn't it? Yeah. Usually they are not the ones that get that home field advantage. They're always having to, I feel like Timberlake plays at Homedale every single year and gets run out of the building. <laughs> but, but yeah, like if you look at it, you know, Sandpoint sitting at fourth right now in four a, and uh, you wonder how much that helped having yeah. that win. And if you're Homedale, that, does that ever come? Let, 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 so let's say they were to lose to Weezer. They both, Weezer and Homedale, both have big wins um, against 4A teams that are both 3 and 4 and 4A. So there is still a good chance. We talked about maybe Gooding jumping somebody, but Gooding doesn't have a signature win like that. That's, that's the only thing missing from Gooding's resume that both of these two teams have. And even with a loss to each other, Potentially, you don't see them fall. So, yeah. Well, I, I mean, we'll we'll know that next week, right? We'll know after that game how that sets up, um, and we'll, we'll. I mean, that'll probably carry into the fight to the championship anyway, into the playoffs. So, well, we, we can we can recircle and beat our heads against the wall some more next yeah. week. Trying to figure out the, yeah, the we'll, next prep. We'll right? do that. 
<laughs> All right. Well, before we dive into what's going on in the eight man ranks this week, let's take a quick break here from our sponsors at DL Evans bank. And then we'll come back to tell you what's going on in the one A ranks for football this week. We will be right back right after this. You're watching slash listening to the treasure Valley prep cast on idahosports.com. Wherever you are, D 11's bank is right there to help from applying for loans to opening new accounts and signing documents. Personalized service is just a video call away. This is Bank Live with D. Evans Bank. This is Community Banking. All right, we are back here on the Treasure Valley PrepCast. Brandon Bainey with Logan Green. Friendly reminder, you can get this uh, podcast four different ways. Audio only at idahosports.com. Across the top of the homepage, you'll see PrepCasts, and then it's got all of our PrepCasts listed. You just click on the Treasure Valley PrepCast. And you're set there. You can also download this podcast wherever you download your podcasts, uh, Apple, Spotify, etc., Google, etc. cetera. Uh, you can also catch the video of this on the IdahoSports.com YouTube channel, as well as our Facebook page. So uh, the eight man rank slogan as we dive into 1A football in District 3. At this point, I think we, we know who... The good teams are. We know who the playoff yep. contenders are, and and at this point, I think the the big game that I'm looking at is obviously Horseshoe Bend, Garden Valley. But I but I think a lot of it is, uh, I'm I'm going to step out on a on a limb here. I, I think it's all formalities it's, at this point, Logan. Yeah, I think it's I think it's settled. I think the the last um, question mark was Council and Garden Valley, and uh, Council won that game 24 to 12 last week. And I think they've sealed up their spot as the second seed. Uh, in the conference, and I think Horseshoe Bend is is going to take care of business against Garden Valley, and so those are going to be your top three from one AD two. I think it's Horseshoe Bend, Council, Garden Valley. So yeah. Council uh, ends up with a home game in the playoffs. I don't know when when's the last time Council had a home game in the playoffs. So uh, congratulations to them. Of course, like you said, there's still two weeks left, um, but I agree. I think it's it's formalities at this point. And then on the other, you look at the flip side um, in 1A, D1, and I think that that it's it's notices to lose. Uh, I, I think notice has it wrapped up. They're going to have that um, de facto conference championship game uh, next week against Wilder, which will decide it. But I, I think notice uh, probably wins that game by a couple of scores. Um, and so you're going to see notice uh, win that. But I still think Wilder has a great shot at sneaking into the playoffs, um, looking at the rankings. If you look at max preps, if you look at who they played wilder right now has two losses, who are their losses to horseshoe bend? Who's the other one to carry? Um, both those teams are undefeated, um, probably go undefeated all year. And so those are two quality losses. And let's say they lose to uh, notice that's three losses against three conference champions, um, with notice will end the year with one loss. So three losses to teams uh, with with one loss combined. So I think you you see Wilder sneak in there and, and make the playoffs this year um, in that regard. I think that'll be – I don't know if anybody else from um, District 3 is going to sneak in uh, at the 1A D1 level, potentially Rimrock. Um, uh, Rimrock had a big win last week against Idaho City, won that one 44-0. Um, but outside of that, I think it's it's Notice and Wilder that are going to punch a ticket. Um, and then on the other side, uh, of course, Horseshoe Bend, Council, and Garden Valley. Yeah, so we talked about it, the 1A D2 level. Uh, that's all predetermined bracketing. So we can tell you that, yes, Council will have a home playoff game against the third-place team from District 5 and 6, which is exciting. 1A D1, Logan, is, is it's making my head hurt because I'm looking at the IHSAA website, and they say, oh, the bracket is determined by the five conference champions, get automatic buys, the top four max prep ranked champions uh, receive a uh, buy into the quarterfinals, and the rest are seeded by max preps. And I'm looking, there's no there's no max preps ratings for any 1A D1. Yeah, yeah, I've looked at that too. I don't know why um, maybe it's going to come out on the uh, – oh, hold on. Wait, I'm clicking on it right now. I, I get a I get a message that says uh, our rankings algorithm requires a minimum number of games played before we can accurately rank teams. Please check back soon. <laughs> Is that what you got? Yes, I got it to work one time though. Hold on, let me see if I can. One uh, AD one. 
Yeah, okay, just, so if you do it, if you do it on mobile, I did it on mobile, <laughs> and um, it asks it has another filter on it for you can select eight man, um, a, instead of doing eleven man. So if um, oh, it's on the computer too. Oh, it's on the okay. okay. Oh, yeah. So if you click eight man, if you click eight man, it shows up. Um, well, I feel dumb now, <laughs> but uh, and you should, but um. <laughs> The way that it shakes out right now, I mean, it it, it has both listed, um, but one AD one. I mean, right now the top five: Oakley, Raft River, Butte County, and Prairie. That's probably how it's going to shake out. Um, but then notice is seventh right now, and Wilder Wilder is twelfth. I mean, you look at it, and even Glens Ferry is ten in there. It's kind of an interesting. Um, it's kind of an interesting setup. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know. He... <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. I, 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 like you said, it's better to have this than where it's all predetermined. I think, I think one AD two still can, can fix that because we were talking about on the eight man prep cast last week. There's yeah. The, the bracket is, is not set up for, like good matchups down, down the line. There's going to be good teams playing each other in the quarterfinals. That shouldn't happen. Um, but I just, I just want more transparency in the process is all I want. Right. I mean, if I pull up, if you pull up the one AD one bracket, I mean, yeah, the, the conference champs get a buy, but then there is, well, and, and, the, and the con there's five conferences, the five conferences, uh, champions automatically get in. And then the other, Spots are all determined via at large Logan. So you could have, I mean, yeah, it's not going to happen this year, but like, for example, let's say the white pine league one year was just like really awesome. I mean, they could run the table and sweep all the at large spots. Right. So, yeah, I mean, there's going to be eight spots that are at large looking at this that are going to play that first week. Um, and, and you know, one of them is going to be raft river and Oakley one. Of, it's going to be one of the two. And then, you know, the, another one is going to be, just looking at it, Lapway and Grace, um, based on because Prairie's going to win that, and then Butte County. So you know the top, the top two in those three levels. So then you still got five more seeds to be placed based on um, on the seeding. And if it were based on right this moment, the next five after that would be one Murtaugh, two Genesee, three. This is off Max Preps, right? So I don't. I, Three is Glenn's Ferry. Hey, look, there they are. I told you that they were going to make the playoffs. <laughs> look out. Go oh. Pilots. Look out. <laughs> Glenn's Ferry is three. Potlatch is four. And then that last spot does go to Wilder. So it's, it's. I mean, it's interesting. It, you know, you look at it. Glenn's Ferry, I guess it's who you've lost to. Because Glenn's Ferry has one win on the season. And Wilder has four. And, and Wilder doesn't have a great win. And neither does Glens Ferry, but their losses, you look at, I mean, they've got to play. They, they had a heck of a schedule this year. They, they already started off playing Prairie and then they had to play um, Raft River and Oakley during the season. So I, who knows? We'll see. Um, oh, that'll be interesting to see if, if, uh, if I hope they make it. I hope that I, I want to rub that all over in Paul's face when Glens Ferry makes the playoffs and Lighthouse Christian doesn't. I, I want to, he owes me a trophy for that. Yeah, well, we'll we'll talk about that on the eight man prep cast and maybe our Magic Valley prep cast with Scott Burton this week as well. Uh, yeah, uh, basically, Max Preps makes my head hurt, Logan. That's yeah, yeah, it's it, it's a mess. And I mean, there's going to be I'm I'm sure probably some grumpy people um, in about ten days when they're they're not where they expected to be or somebody's in that shouldn't have been there. So yeah. what a mess. We'll see. All right. Well, we'll come back and maybe have some more data that we can analyze next week and maybe have a clearer picture of what's going on. You know, this point of the season, it shouldn't be this muddy, but it is. So, uh, all right. right. That'll that'll do it for this edition of the Treasure Valley PrepCast on IdahoSports.com. We're right in the thick of things. The fall sports postseason is upon us. It's one of the best times of year. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, Logan. It's going to be super exciting. Yeah, definitely. Um, we're just excited to stop talking about it and actually see uh, how the playoffs are going to shake out. 
Yep, absolutely. So thanks for tuning in uh, to the uh, Idaho, uh, the Treasure Valley Prep Cast on IdahoSports.com. Brought to you by DL Evans Bank. This is Community Banking. For Logan Green, I'm Brandon Bainey. We'll see you next time on IdahoSports.com.